Queen Elizabeth's coffin has been lowered into the royal vault in St. George's Chapel in the grounds of Windsor Castle. During the committal service, the crown jewels were taken from it, and a ceremonial wand of office broken and put in their place. Earlier, huge crowds lined the route taken by the state hears as it made its way from London to Windsor, with flowers thrown in its path. This morning, a state of funeral service was held at Westminster Abbey, the building in which the Queen was married and crowned. During his sermon, the Archbishop of Canterbury said the late Queen touched a multitude of lives during her 70-year reign. Tributes have been paid to the Queen's unstinting service at a ceremony held in St. George's Chapel, Windsor, where she will be laid to rest. The ceremony, led by the Dean of Windsor, was attended by 800 people, including royalty and staff. The Queen will be buried alongside her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, at a private burial. The heirs arrived in Windsor following her state funeral service at West. Minister Abbey. The state hears made its way to the Berkshire town with flowers still on its bonnet and roof from well wishers who had thrown them as the royal cottage made its way from Willington Ark in London. The route avoided motorways to allow as many people as possible to pay their last respects. Thousands of people on that route broke out into applause as the hears passed them. The procession made its way about one mile long the long walk up to Windsor Castle, with members of the armed forces lining the way. King Charles III then walked behind his mother's coffin, accompanied by the Queen's other children, the Princess Royal, the Duke of York, and the Earl of Wessex. The Prince of Wales, the Duke of Sussex, and Peter Phillips also joined them in the procession to St. George's Chapel. The Queen's coffin draped in the royal standard with imperial state crown, orb and scepter on top was lifted from the state ears into the chapel where it sat on a catafalque. The dean, the very reverend David Corner, began the ceremony by praising a life of unstinting service to the nation and commonwealth. He said of the Queen, in the midst of a rapidly changing and frequently troubled world, a calm and dignified presence has given us confidence to face the future as she did with courage and with hope. The crown jewelry removed the instruments of state, the imperial state crown, the orb and scepter from the coffin before they were put on the altar. King Charles then placed on the coffin a small crimson regimental flag called the camp color traditionally used to indicate the location of the commanding officer. The coffin was then lured into the royal vault before the sovereign's piper played a lament. Guests at the service included the late king's star, past and present, alongside prime ministers of countries of which the monarch was head of state. At a private burial service on Monday evening, the queen will be laid to rest with her late husband, Prince Philip, in the King George the Sixth. Memorial Chapel. That service will only be attended by the royal family. Details of it have not been disclosed, with Buckingham Palace calling it a deeply personal family occasion. Earlier, King Charles III walked behind his mother's coffin as it proceeded from Westminster Hall to the Abbey. About 2,000 people gathered at the service, including world leaders and royalty. This was the first state funeral since Sir Winston Churchill's in 1965 and was the biggest ceremonial event since World War II. Planning of the order of the service of the ceremony was discussed with the Queen over a number of years. St. George's Chapel is where the Queen worshipped at Easter and celebrated baptisms, confirmations and weddings during her reign. In a touching gesture, the Queen's faithful courtiers Muick and Sandy also made an appearance at Windsor Castle. This news from BBC. Please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.